is my knitting and spinning podcast. I'm filming from Brisbane in Australia. I live here with my husband and our pets, Cookie the dog and Possum and Moon the Burke parakeets. Um, welcome if you're a new viewer and I have subscribers, yay! <laughs> um, thank you for subscribing and I hope um, you love continuing watching. Um, I'm so glad that people actually have been watching this and I got a few thumbs up even. So yeah, it's really encouraging and thank you very much. Um, okay, so tiny bit of housekeeping to start with. I am uh, filming on my phone this week and probably going forward. I was filming on my DSLR and uh, with like a, a work light, like for doing workmen use them. And I was just finding it a little bit difficult. Although in saying that right now, I'm like staring at my face in the phone and that is <laughs> kind of weird. It was sort of nice to speak to a camera lens. Um, and now I'm really talking to myself. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'll be doing that. And with natural light, I found that um, my studio is actually a really good place for filming. Um, yeah, so hopefully that is an improvement for you. Um, okay, another thing, the last few, uh, last two videos, I have mentioned my husband, but I have not used his name. <laughs> so my darling husband is named Ryan. Um, yeah, so from now on, I will just mention him as Ryan. Um, yeah, that, <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but anyway. One, one more housekeeping thing. Um, the giveaway that I ran in my first podcast, No Takers. So that book will just sit in my little pile of uh, things. I'm sure I'll add like more prizes. We'll do giveaways in the future. Um, yeah, so that will just sit there until I think of some, some other way to give it away. Okay, so um, at the beginning, before we get into any knitting stuff, I'm just going to share some footage from a little adventure that we did a few weekends ago. It was school holidays, so Ryan, he's a teacher, he was off work. Um, and so we went, we thought we'd go for some hiking at O'Reilly's, which is just south of Brisbane. And on the way, um, we, Ryan had found out that there were going to be alpacas at a winery. So he kind of surprised me that week and was like, hey, I found this on Facebook, let's do this. So um, we went with my friend Rachel, we packed the alpacas for a little while, and then um, we, pretty, we pretty much had them all to ourselves. It was so good. Like there was, um, the alpacas were under this beautiful silky oak tree, as you'll see. And then there was just like this group of young people, probably for a hen's party or you know wedding thing, um, off in the distance with their baskets of wine and cheese. <laughs> it was just so lovely. Um, I wish we had have like planned to wine taste or something, but the plan was to go walking at O'Reilly's. So, but yeah, it was just so lovely. They're really cute. Um, and apparently the farm that they're from, just near there, you can go anytime you want and um, pat them either over the fence or I think they have a cafe there. And so you can go and um, have a proper little outing with nibbles and alpaca pats. Yeah, it was just so nice.
into the knitting stuff now. Um, I have one finished object for you and it is Ryan's birthday socks. So I finished these three weeks after his birthday um, but I and I managed to keep them a surprise, which was amazing. Um, so I'd like be knitting in bed with the door closed so that he had to knock before he came in. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, yeah, so I, I really, I had this idea in my head that I really wanted him to like open them up from some brown like wrapping paper and be like oh texture so lovely um yeah so I got to do that um these are the hedgehog fibers um sprouting socks pattern and it's also in the hedgehog fibers ink colorway so it's a 90% merino 10% nylon um they were knit cuff down and as I mentioned in the first episode, they've got this 2x2 two two ribbing, very cushy heel. I really like it. Um, so I'd never done cables before in, in something. I'd like just tested out the technique. Um, but this, they were basically like 2x2 two two ribbing all the way down except for obviously the bottom of the foot is plain knitting acid dyeing but I found a really good tutorial on the dyer's notebook um, YouTube it's her name is Lara um, and she kind of goes through like all the safety stuff you need to know um, some different techniques like if you're trying to get a solid color she said a really good tip is to add salt to the water and I've got an example of that um, so I wanted this, um, the colour in landscape dyes is called Tasman and I wanted to get a really even colour. So I added salt with that one um, and I think that is pretty even. Um, so I'll tell you what this is for in um, the actual whip section. Um, so that was one cool tip that I learnt. Um, and then the other, uh, I don't know if this was from reading the landscapes pamphlet or watching YouTube, um, but you can actually use your microwave to dye yarn. So I've got a little microwave down in my dye studio um, and I found a glass bowl that I could use that fits in there because it's quite small. Um, the only thing with it is uh, the yarn it gets kind of really squished up in there so it's hard to get the colors to go um, right through to the bottom and um, get a lot of color so there are lots of white patches when you use that method um, which is okay you just have to be aware of it so I did this one in the microwave and I was aiming to get it to look kind of like um, eggshell um, I don't know if it, the colours are quite right for that, but it's kind of the this bluey colour with little brown speckles and then quite a bit of white. So I've actually got a little sample here. I'll swatch. So if you were knitting this in socks, it would be like this little line would be like an actual line. Um, so I thought that was sweet. I don't know what I'm going to make out of that skein yet. Um, yeah, but I like the colours um, and it's good to know that I can just use a microwave and make things a little quicker. Um, although, <laughs> because I was trying to get more colour, I was like flipping it over and adding more and putting it back in. So it, it did take a while, but it was, pardon me, <laughs> it was fun. Um, Okay, the next one is in a skein. Um, I've actually started knitting this, so this is one of my whips. And this one, um, I'm going to put some pictures up for you. I, through looking at um, pictures online, I worked out that to make these, this is it knitted up. 
these zips of colour, like zip, 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 um, you need to dye the yarn with stripes going across the skein and you'll see from the picture I put up. Um, so I was really happy with how this turned out um, and I'll show you the project that I'm using it in and you'll understand. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is basically every colour that I got in the Coastal Colourways kit. Um, and I think they look really nice together. Lots of contrast. The red, the blue kind of offsets the corally colour. Um, and the green adds a little more interest. Um, so this is it in a bowl. It is a little lighter than, um, like overall lighter than the yarn that they used in the project I'm using it for. Um, but yeah, really happy with that one. So yeah, those, um, those yarns I ordered from, um, Platypus Yarns. It's an Australian supplier and it is a 80-20 merino nylon. I'm pretty sure so it is a sock yarn and it is the cheapest that I could find um, I don't know where it's milled um, but I found out about them from gum blossom yarns who is a natural dyer so I don't know if she's done a bit more research to me into it um, but I thought that was a good recommendation from her um, so yeah platypus yarns um, so these ones I don't like as much um, and if you watch the Dyer's notebook tutorials you'll um, she'll mention muddying of colors that can sometime ha sometimes happen when you put contrasting colors next to each other um, so for example this one red and green on opposite each other on the color wheel and I think it's a little I was actually hoping with this one that the coral would be more like a light orange or almost pinky color and it's still got quite a red um hue to it so yeah it just looks a bit funny um, I'll probably end up turning this one into like Christmas ornaments or something like that. It may not even knit up that well. Um, but I was, this is just a, a merino that I got from Spotlight. Um, and I was just trying to see, um, if you like twisted the skein and then put it in, um, the water to dye it, if that made any difference to just like laying it out flat and then putting it in to dye it um so I don't know still learning okay this next one is kind of a finished object but it has a whip inside of it um <laughs> so this is the project bag that I made um last week it's got a lovely greeny contrasting zipper um, and I've made um, made it out of wool felt which we had left over from making koalas for Ryan's classroom um, and then the outside is like a thicker cotton dyed with rosemary and iron and then the inside is a thinner cotton um, dyed at the same time with the rosemary and iron and it's got a little thingy on there. Um, the tutorial for this bag is on BetsyMakes.com um, and it was really easy to follow the instructions and I super enjoyed the construction. Um, it has these little tabs that you put over each end of the zipper and I've sewn project bags, like little ones before, with zippers, and I found that really difficult to get it to look neat. So that's a really good trick. Um, so inside, um, <laughs> 
So I followed that tutorial, but I also made, uh, so that it will be easier for me to make them in the future, a pattern on Illustrator that I could print out and it would have the seam allowances and everything. Um, instead of like having to get my ruler out and measure the fabric every time. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to making some more of these. They're super handy. Um, I'll have to make a bigger version as well for when I start doing um, like jumpers and stuff. This could fit, it could fit two balls of yarn quite easily, maybe three, um, but it's definitely like a great size for socks, heaps of room for socks. And I've got some socks in there right now. Ta-da! Um, I also dyed this yarn um, last week and I've named this one. Um, you'll see like this ball is really messy. It's because I hand wound it. Um, I didn't, I'm giving away a treasure. I got a ball winder. It's very cool. <laughs> I'll show you later though. Um, so this one I have named, it's In Your Eyes. And that is um, when I was winding it, into a ball I was just like this is so much like Snape um, and then I thought up the clever little it's in your eyes and if you've read Harry Potter or seen them you'll know um, yeah so this um, is actually the kelp color in the landscape natural dyes uh, sorry <laughs> acid dyes um, yeah, so with this one, it is a variegated or semi-solid, um, yeah, semi-solid tone. And um, the difference between this one, semi-solid, and like pretty much a solid of that one, where I use the salt, this one, I um, put the dye in the water. I don't know if I stirred it even because I knew that I wanted it to be variegated or semi-tonal, semi-solid. <laughs> um, and so I purposefully got darker bits from like dipping half in and then I let some of it float on the surface and stay white for a while before I dunked it in and like stirred it up. Um, so that worked really well and I got it exactly how I intended to. Um, the thing that's not really working out <clears throat> is the socks. Um, I've just got these on DPNs at the moment because I only have one cable at the moment for my interchangeables. Um, so that is being taken up by another project. Um, so these socks, they actually look a lot better on the screen than they do. Um, in real life um, then I think I'm doing something wrong with them and I have since learnt the right way to do it I think from doing the shawl that I'm making um, so this pattern is the Aussie Sunshine Socks by Claire Devine um, which is a paid pattern, my first paid pattern. But a little secret, I didn't pay for it. If you sign up to Claire's mailing list, email list, um, she actually gives you a free pattern. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so nice of you. Um, so thank you, Claire. <laughs> I'm sure I'll pay for patterns of yours in the future, but uh, I didn't have to, so that was really good. Um, yeah, uh, another thing with these socks, I or socks in general, I kind of have false starts a lot. Usually I cast on like three times <laughs> and it is a little frustrating, but if this is you as well, please don't be disheartened. Um, you know, you'll get there and your socks are gonna be perfect eventually. Um, so I cast these on 
and did a twisted ribbing like the pattern calls for and then I don't know what happened I got frustrated or something sorry guys I lost my train of thought and it got a bit hot so I've taken my jacket off um okay so I was talking about the ribbing so I this second or third time I cast them on I don't even remember um I did the two by two ribbing um my other socks have a twisted ribbing so I thought why not just do do a two by two for something different um so yeah I've been having a lot of brain issues with these socks and I don't it's not really the pattern, it's probably just the fact that I have never done lace before, um, so I'm learning fresh. Um, so you can see that... Shoot, probably. There are little holes in the pattern. Um, the thing I think I'm doing wrong with it though is um, there's a spot in the chart that says no stitch and I had no idea what that was and the pattern doesn't really explain it so I think now I know I have to look it up maybe a bit more um but I think you're meant to drop the yarn over that is above that no stitch on the chart so I'm gonna frog these back to the cuff and start again um, and see how I go. Um, so yeah, that will be a work in progress maybe next time um, because I am working on a shawl as well. Um, but yeah, I really love this colour. Mm. Um, you'll see, I'll, I would have put up a picture of the finished project picture for these socks and I just, I love that um, semi-solid colour that they've got it in. That's why I chose to do one. Okay. The next whip is spinning. I have given the Turkish spindle a go. Spindle. <laughs> um, I, I said that I would spin on this with some of the fibre from my current fibre share buddy but I've actually put um, some fibre from my last fibre share buddy on there first up. Um, so I'm keeping it in my avo bag that I showed you last time um, and this, this is a Turkish spindle in the fiber share video that I did, I actually showed it upside down. <laughs> I don't know how things work. Um, I have to learn them. Uh, so these bits point downwards. Um, I watched a tutorial about how to use a Turkish spindle and it just like changed my life for drop spindling uh, in general <laughs> because some of them like you look up medieval spindle and there's like not a lot of information <laughs> on spinning them um so I learned how to do a proper half hitch which makes it like that just holds and then you spin um yeah and then I really like how sturdy this construction is and you wind it two over one under two over one under so that you get a really consistent um bowl on the bottom um yeah okay so i have done one whole bowl which was one roll lag um and i'll show you these are beautiful um, so Firefly Fiber Arts, I mentioned Maggie, um, last episode, um, she sent me so many beautiful things. So this is one of the roll ags and it's got Stellina in it. Um, this colorway is called Scrumptious. Oop. <laughs> um, and you can find her on Etsy, Firefly Fiber Arts, um, and she's based in Canada. Um, yeah, so I've spun 
one Rolag. I've got this one, the other bits in the bag, and then this one. Um, so that's a little thingy there. And I actually got a really cute surprise this week. I was watching an old episode of Grocery Girls and uh, Maggie had sent them some stuff and got mentioned. And I was like, yo, you're famous. So I sent her a message. Oh, that was a fun surprise. Um, yeah, she sells like lots of cool things that not many people have, um, like counting rings and um, uh, spinning wheel awls. Um, also, well, a few people have like a hand balm, um, but she has one as well. So yeah, and obviously like lots of yummy yarn and uh, fiber. Fiber in many different forms, Rolags, bats, other things. <laughs> um, so I'm very, I'm very lucky to have got her as a buddy. Um, okay, I'm saving my shawl whip for the last because it's exciting um am i no it's shawl time okay so i've already shown you the yarn for it i um so i was looking at some different shawl designs and i thought oh um stephen west's are really cool but i don't think i am ready for that yet. <laughs> so I thought I'll pick something that's kind of simple but has really cool colors um, and I'll do that. And I saw um, Andrea Maori's Gather design. I know she is most popular for her Faded series um, but I really liked this one because it has um, a little bit of lace and um, it is a crescent design. And I really like on the crescent designs how um, it has the, the pointy bits at the end that you can like put anywhere. Um, yeah, so I'll put up pictures of that so you can see what it will kind of look like at the end. Um, so these are the colors that I have done for the shawl. So that's why I've got it calls for two of the like multicolored zippy color and then one of a solid color. So my colors ended up almost like the one in the pattern, um, but maybe just a little bit paler, um, which will suit me probably a bit better than having like super bold um, colors, especially with the red. I like the more faded subdued red um so I have got that much <laughs> so this is um maybe 30 rows shy of the first section being done that'll be like <laughs> a little pointy end bit um, ooh. so I've got my, I went and bought 3.5s this week, um, from the Yarn Glorious Yarn, local, my local yarn shop, um, Sharps, again, higher hires, um, and the thing I am enjoying most about, uh, the first section is actually the increase. It is such a fun increase. Um, I'll, I'll put up the actual name of the increase. Um, I can't remember. I think it's knit, knit front, knit back, knit front. Um, and it's so fun to do. It's like a little swing. Um, yeah, that's kind of a funny thing to be excited about, but <laughs> I really like the increase. Um, it's also a super easy, like I don't want to give away too much about the pattern, but um, it is a super easy two row, um, like alternating for the, the garter stitch sections. Um, so it's definitely one you can like um, do on the bus or whatever. You just have to keep a, 
a tally of how many rows you've done. Um, <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, the second section then goes into the solid color, um, and that is like a simple lace design. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, I'm hoping that this will knit pretty quickly. I only started this uh, on Saturday, and it is Monday. Um, and I wasn't, I was just knitting every now and again. So it's, it's pretty all right. Um, what else about this one? Oh yeah. Um, so shawls, I am, have been a little bit shy of doing a shawl because when my brain thought about shawls, it thought about like, a triangle that you wear over your shoulders and that's like it you might like which is fine but I didn't it didn't really appeal to me that much um whereas this one it's like a glorious scarf so like I think that's why I like the little um skinny hangy bits because it like gives this little interesting thing about basically what would be a scarf, except it's not. It's a bit bulkier and a bit more interesting. Um, I also really like the color, old, <laughs> how the colors alternate. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, to me, it's more like a, uh, a cool scarf than a shawl. But it is a shawl and it's a crescent shape and I feel like I'm knitting the moon which is amazing <laughs> okay enough about that I'm really excited about knitting a shawl could you tell um yeah all right that'll grow really quickly and you'll see it a few more times this little this little one I've been watching a lot of podcasts recently Podcasts. Um, and getting lots of good ideas and new projects to do. And I watched The Gentle Knitter. I really like The Gentle Knitter. She's lovely, Nicole. Um, and she was knitting the coziest memories blanket. And oh my gosh, the colors of like leftover yarn that she has. <sighs> I basically just wanted to knit what she was knitting. Um, but alas, my scrappy yarn is, it's so pastel. This is it guys, my scraps. Um, this one is from the socks that I knit for myself, the fur socks. This one is, sorry, focusing. Um, it was a 12 gram mini skein or something. No, seven grams, so tiny, um, from Maggie. And then this one was one, like just a tiny test one I did dyeing. Um, I think, I think I was trying similar things with this one to this one, but this one has the kelp color in it as well, I think. I really like this color. I think I made good notes. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> that's like the totality of my scraps and it's really not enough. I think I've started this quite prematurely um, because you have to be able to repeat the squares in the cozy blanket and that that's it. I'm gonna get rid of this one that was just a plain pink yarn held double with mohair and it ended up being really big. Um, although I like the color, um, it doesn't really fit in. So I'll take away that one. So imagine that just repeated and then when I get more scraps, there'll be completely different colors and <sighs> premature. I started it prematurely. Um, the thing I'm really liking though is the mini mini squares. 
So that's what the gentle knitter did. She um, she took the coziest memory blanket and just turned it into a mini version. Except she did her decreases differently and it took me a few goes to get it right and get this lovely knit ridge down the middle. Um, I forget where I wrote it down, so I will put it in the show notes if you're interested in doing um, the mini mini version of the coziest memory blanket. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure when you'll see this one again. Um, maybe soon because I might have scraps left from the shawl and the other yarn I've dyed. Maybe. These next few are kind of funny whips as well. Um, I mentioned in the first episode that I wanted to spin to knit the soiree sweater. Um, I've also got another cardigan on my list to knit and spin to knit. Um, and that is the um, Streetwise cardigan. And it's in the Big Needles Chunky Knits book by Helgrid Van Impelen. Um, I couldn't find this pattern or this book on Ravelry, um, but I borrowed it from my local library. So that's how I found it. Um, and the style of this cardigan is really simple and it's very similar to a cardigan that I actually already have. Um, it's a cardigan that my our neighbor knit for my mum way back in the day. Um, and it is like this light lilac y purple, and I wear it all the time. And I wear it out, and I really shouldn't because I'm wearing it to death, <laughs> and um, it's getting a bit ratty. Um, I call it my muggle jumper. <laughs> I don't know, it just like makes me feel like I'm wearing muggle wear. Um, so yeah, anyway, I really love it um, and I need something to kind of replace it eventually. Sorry, oh, hair's annoying me. Um, yeah, so I thought I will use the grey portion of the Blue Moon alpaca fibre that I have. Um, so, last week... Yeah, last week I got two and carded some fiber. So I've got three of these. Ooh. Two more. Um, I just kind of, um, <laughs> I'm not going to show you, but my, I don't have like a lot of proper tools yet. A lot of it is um, handmade that I've like just knocked together in the shed. Um, so my um, hackle and comb, I kind of like have a longer piece and then a short piece that I use as a comb. It's wooden nails. <laughs> Let's be honest. It is so, it looks like a medieval torture instrument. It's like pretty, yeah. Um, so it takes me a while. I wish I had proper like hand combs. A drum cut is just a dream. Like they're so expensive. Um, so yeah, I cutted some fiber. This is only half of what I've got to do. Um, and then obviously this is not going to be enough for a full long cardigan. Um, so I've also got to get some grey merino and then I'll blend those together. Oops, dropping bits. Um, but that's that. Um, so carding takes a while and I get a bit sneezy. So I've been using this as like a face mask. Um, and this is from Shana. So I've already found a use for it. Little silky, I think it's naturally dyed. Um, square and I also wore it as a headband the other day so there you go useful little things um, 
I feel so like a, like a cowboy when I wear it as a face mask. Um, okay, on the spinning note as well, I <laughs> I have in my goal list for spinning to um, spin up some like 15 gram amounts of blends. Um, so I've got two swatches that I've knit so far. This one I did a long time ago. And it is a 60% Wakaya Alpaca, 30% Mohair and 10% Soy Silk. So you'll see there are like little orange zips in there. That is the Soy Silk. Um, I went to the Queensland Spinners Association open day at the beginning of this year and they have like these little baggies of like 10 20 gram um, bits of different fiber they have everything um, so I thought while I was there oh and they're like quite cheap for 10 grams it's like a dollar or less um, so I bought a whole heap of different plant fibers and I thought I'll give that a go um, and some mohair as well um, so I've got a little list that I'm just working through. So I've done that one. And then this one is 50% um, Longwool Leicester and 50% Alpaca. And I think it was Wakaya as well, um, but I'll have to double check my notes. It could be Suri. This was actually really nice to spin. I like spinning Longwool Leicester. Um, I've got kind of a cheat way of doing a um, long draw. Um, I pre-draft and then it's like a lot easier to um, do the long draw. So yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not more technical when I'm speaking about spinning. Um, I don't, I don't know enough yet. Um, yeah, but I have been watching some, I'm sorry I forget the name of the spinning podcaster. Um, maybe I can find it and put it up. Um, she does, like, sometimes she'll be, like, talking about something she's done and it's so technical, it just goes over my head, but, like, that's good that someone's doing that because it means that eventually I'll be able to learn and, um, you know, be able to speak more technically about spinning. Um, but she was talking about treadling and counting your treadles. So for this one, I, um, I was counting five treadles and then letting it feed into the orifice. So, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Um, anyway, uh, just doing some little swatches. So I can see, you know, like how drapey they are, how it feels against the skin, um, what kind of stitch definition. So yeah, it probably looks a bit messy compared to like non-hand spun, mill spun. But yeah, that's fun. I also learned from a very pink tutorial this week how to do a garter stitch border. <laughs> on a swatch so like this one curls up a lot if I had a garter stitch border on that it would not curl <clears throat> pardon me okay this one's also a bit of a strange whip <laughs> it's more of a treasure I think um but I found at the op shop a man's sweater that was 100% wool. Um, so I have undone one of the sleeves and I have got myself some wonderful two-ply. Um, so at the moment this is, so the, the sweater was, um, I'll put up some pictures of the sweater because I've already started taking it apart. Um, the sweater was like two ply, but two held together. 
Um, and I got this with the intention of pulling it apart and then knitting Boom from Pom Pom Quarterly, um, which is like a little tank tee. I'll put a picture of that too. Um, yeah, so it's such a lovely colour. Um, I've worked out because boom, uh, you need DK weight. So that will be three strands held together of this two ply. Um, and then to do the stripes, I'll probably either buy a DK or I might have something around that I could use. Um, yeah, so that will be coming in probably the next, um, podcast. I would have cast that on. Exciting. Um, so that will pro boom will probably actually end up being my first garment, I think. Um, I've ordered more cables and needles as well, so I'll be able to have lots of things on the needles. Now we are properly into treasures. <laughs> the first one has a little story. Um, the other weekend, we were like, oh, treat yourself. Um, and we went to West End. And so when I say we, Ryan and I, <laughs> um, we went to West End and there is a nursery there called Mappins. And it is, it's like the, the coolest nursery ever. Um, just like plants hanging everywhere. And there's even like this, um, the, there are, so many bits to it um but there's this one bit where you like go through a curtain of plants to get in it's so magical um they also have a little uh area where there's like things for decorating terrariums and like shells and um semi-precious stones and now they have ceramic critters um, so this is, this guy is actually in one of my title screens, um, because I think I was like editing the video, anyway, the time's a bit out of whack, but anyway, I thought I'd share him today. He's so cute. Little lammy. He even has a tail. <laughs> he lives in, um... In my studio, I have a few potted indoor plants. They're kind of dying at the moment. They need, I think they need to go outside. There's not actually a lot of light that gets to that particular windowsill. Okay, so while we were in West End, we also visited a vegan restaurant that had just opened called Grown. Um, they have some really cool, interesting foods and good coffee. But disclaimer, if you want to go there and you're not accustomed to vegan food, if you're getting coffee, they don't have cow's milk. So pro tip, <laughs> ask for coconut milk. That's first choice. Second choice, almond milk. I don't like soy milk. <laughs> you might like soy milk. Um, but yeah, that's like a tip that I learned from um, my brother's ex-boyfriend, I think. I think. Anyway, speaking of which, this is kind of more live section, but whatever. Let's not have a live section. Let's just put it all throughout. Um, so I have mentioned before that I studied photography. I rarely do... Um, photography gigs but I have one coming up so I thought I'd tell you about it um, and also you might want to go along if you live in Brisbane uh, so there is my brother's ex-boyfriend Josh he's lovely um, he organizes a vegan night market so there's like vegan food and stalls with hippie stuff <laughs> um, incense and cool blankets and whatnot and there's like heaps of book stalls um what else is there oh vegan ice cream <laughs> I didn't have any when we were there when we did the last one but um man it looks good uh, um 
yeah, heaps of food, um, kombucha, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so there is one happening this Saturday night. Saturday. I better check that. It's either Friday or Saturday. You can find it on Facebook. It will be called the Vegetation Night Market in Brisbane. Um, so look that up, uh, come along. I think it's from five till 10. Oh, there's also like live music and stuff. Um, maybe storytelling, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a really cool event. I was so proud of Josh. Um, hit the last one was his first one um, when he organized it. Such a great event, it was so fun. Um, so I'm photographing that again. Uh, yeah, so that's good. Uh, I'm. My sister who moved to Canada, um, she and her girlfriend were at it last time and they were dressed as peas and a, and a tomato. And I'm, <laughs> I'm really gonna miss them. They looked so cute. Um, maybe someone else will wear the peas and tomatoes costume, but <laughs> anyway, that's so sidetracked. Uh, yeah, so you would have just learned that I have two gay siblings, <laughs> so that's a thing, that is a thing. Um, I actually have a lot of siblings, um, there are five of us in total. Um, oh, I really miss my sister already, she's not been gone very long. Um, okay, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna get the ball winder out of the way. This monster, okay. Ooh. I have been looking at ball winders for ages and I didn't want to spend very much on one, but I wanted one that was going to like last me a long time um, and that could do more than 100 grams, just in case. Cause sometimes um, when I'm spinning, I can spin more than 100 grams on a bobbin, which is really surprising because my bobbins are quite small. Um, but yeah, so I got this one. It was from eBay and I liked it because it has metal parts. This is metal, this handle is plastic and this, the cone bit is plastic and then like a little cover under here. Everything else is metal. It's got a little thingy here to put under the desk. Um, yeah, so I was really glad that I found this one. I think it was about $30, which, I'm gonna sneeze again. <laughs> no. <sighs> Saved it. Um, yeah, so I think uh, they're generally about forty dollars twenty five for like a small plastic one um so yes it's from china but metal not a lot of plastic it's gonna last me forever um i have wound a few balls already um i will say it's not terribly fast but I think that may have more to do with my swift than the ball winder. Um, it is a little noisy because of the metal parts. We'll see if I can. It's not that noisy actually, a bit. Anyway, um, yeah so my swift also handmade. Um, out of some wood and like copper joining bits and pieces. It doesn't actually look that bad, but I made it the Amish style and it kind of sits up in the air and spins that way. So um, yeah, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's not the best. I think I would rather have one of those like umbrella ones that go that way, um, but in the future, down the road, when I have more money, I don't know. Um, yeah, super, oh, it's so good to finally have a ball winder. 
such a relief. Now I can like knit without having to hand wind. And they look neat and they stay together and they fit in project bags better. All the cakes. Mm. Okay, I'll show you these ones. As I mentioned so many times earlier, I bought some new needles. So I'm just slowly acquiring um, needle tips for my interchangeables. I did quite a bit big order um, of a few different sizes that I'll need for knitting um, soiree, the long cardigan, and just some, did I get some other sizes in between? Maybe not. Um, so some longer cables for those as well. Um, but I needed the 3.5s for my shawl, which they're not in the packet. Um, right away, I needed it. I needed to cast on. Um, so I, I went to Young Glorious Yarn and got that. Okay, this next one is kind of exciting. It is not really knitting related. Um, it is more uh, arts and craft related. But um, I got a, I'll just show you the box. A speedball um, lino cutting tool. Of course, it's got fluff on it already. <laughs> um, so, this is the tool and you attach the tips in here and then you keep all of the tips in the bottom. So in the past I have done a little, like in high school I did some lino cutting, but um, those really cheapy ones from the art store, they just don't cut it. Literally, don't cut it. Um, and I've been wanting to do some project bags with patterns on them. So, got my lino cutting tool. I bought some Permacet ink. I just put it in white. Um, I could probably try adding some like natural pigment maybe to it. Uh, we'll experiment. Um, or like white is fine that's that will look nice and this one actually says it's eco-friendly so that's really nice um 100 solvent free it was also cheaper than the derwent one so um i got that at the art shed in west end they had these for the cheapest even cheaper than online <clears throat> and I've done one cut so far. Um, I had this uh, little bit of lino. I just, I was at uni and one day I walked into the art supply store there and I was like, ooh, lino, I'll just get that. Didn't have a um, cutters even. I was just like, yeah, lino, good. Um, so uh, some avocados and I've done it in a tile pattern that will repeat. Um, I've never done that before either, but these bits here print out white and it's too much. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then on these avocados that have, um, nothing and a white pit, I would just have a little line outline around the edge. Um, yeah. So this one has a nothing pit and a white flesh and then a nothing border so yeah it does look really cute um when you print it out um just it's too much too much white um yeah so i'm excited to do that i also bought another piece of lino um so i can do a few more um different stamps i have no idea what i'm gonna do yet um maybe a bunny or a uh, alpaca or something yeah we'll see Okay, uh, I think, okay, this is the last treasure and then I will talk about some pattern crush stuff. Um, this is the best treasure in the world. The Anxious Knitter, aka Joy, 
um, she's a podcaster, podcast anxious knitter, um, is my favourite. She is so funny and wonderful. <sighs> Just lovely. Anyway, she is from Canada. Um, and she and her husband, Luke, just opened a Etsy shop called Cabinet of Curios. And it is the best. Um, apart from having gorgeous yarn, uh, I just can't get over. She has some handmade polymer stitch markers. When I first saw them, I was like, those are too cute. I need them in my life. Okay, so I got my order the other day. Um, I think it actually sat in the post box for like a day or two, which is really sad. <laughs> it's been raining a lot here, so like haven't been out to check the post. The packaging, I don't know how to show you this. Um, so, Crinkle, crinkle. Sorry, because I've already undone it. So, I should have prepared this earlier. When you get it, it is wrapped up in this black tissue and it has this key ribbon and then it has a riddle. So cool. I read this out to Ryan and he was like, oh, this answer. And then I was like, oh, this answer. And then like we joined them together and it was the answer. I'm not gonna tell you because you might want to uh, riddle for yourself. Anyway, um, amazing packaging. And then you've got, I bought, cause I bought stitch markers. So they come in these little black things with little Kiwashi. Ah. Um, so onto the actual products. Also, their logo is so cool. Luke designed it. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so. Stitch markers slash progress keepers. They are more adorable in real life than I could have imagined. We've got an emu egg, a mushroom, complete with dirt, and a little speckled egg. I don't know if it's like a sparrow or a, uh, what are they called? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, speckled egg, so cute. Um, on these little cards. And these guys are not very expensive and the postage is so reasonable. Like it's coming from the other side of the world and I think it was like five, six dollars postage, which is amazing. Um, I also bought yarn, cool yarn tag. It's on herbarium base, which is BFL and silk. And this one's called Pavlova's Slippers. It's gorgeous. I do not know what this is gonna be yet, but it's so pretty. Um, yeah, actually I haven't, I'm too scared to like unwind the skein <laughs> because I may have to send it back. Um, but yeah, I love the pale patches. So like, that's a really nice avocado color. Mm. Anyway, I was so excited when I opened it. Um, I also think that this, <laughs> would look really good on my new project bag. 
that's it for the show and tell part. Um, I just wanted to tell you about two patterns that I have in my queue. Um, one of them is the Mount Pleasant Tea. I have seen a few um, podcasters talking about it. Um, it's by Megan No Decker of Pippin Pin. Um, and the amazing things that I've learned about it. It only takes two skeins of sock yarn to make this tea, um, which is like amazing. Uh, so it's definitely on my list. I am going to ask for some yarn for Christmas to make this tea. I was in Yarn Glorious Yarn and I was checking out the, um, oh my God. Uh, Malabrigo, sorry, I was getting Madeline Tosh and Malabrigo mixed up in my head just then. Um, yeah, the Malabrigo yarn, sock yarn, they have some really nice colours and I think that would go really well in with that tea. Um, so the Anxious Knitter, Joy, has made one already and then Junky Yard Designs, I think. Uh, what was her name? I'm really sorry. I didn't write down. Um, but she was at Knit City in Vancouver, Canada, somewhere, uh, recently. And she said that she got to see the samples of it and got to try it on and saw lots of other people trying it on and said that it fits really well on all kinds of bodies. So I'm really excited to try that out. It also has a really lovely like little lace design at the bottom. Um, and it is a cropped tee, which is cool because um, I generally like to wear, um, <laughs> they're kind of momish, but um, I have this pair of trousers that are like three quarter length from Uniqlo. And that's like pretty much my uniform, that and some kind of top. Um, yeah, so that would go really well with those pants or like a high-waisted skirt or whatever. Um, there's also, a, it's similar-ish, but it's um, more of a baggy style. It is called Tegna by Caitlin Hunter. Um, so it's like more flowy. It also has a lace design at the bottom and the sleeves are a bit longer. Um, and it takes... It would take three skeins for my size. Um, so that's also on the list. I, I like the flowiness of it. It's the picture I'll show you. It's like really warm and <laughs> so baby. Um, kind of autumn-y, whereas the other one is kind of more of a summer look. Um, yeah, so they're the two that have really sparked my interest this fortnight. Um, yeah, that's it. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you guys again. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, I hope you've had a really good fortnight and I hope you have a really good next fortnight. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Thank you to those of you who subscribed and liked. Um, oh, it's just been so fun so far. <laughs> Um, you can find me on Instagram as Leslie Enid and the same on Ravelry. Um, yeah, hope you have a really good week 